We're looking at airspace. We have three main kinds of airspace, but the first two that we're gonna go over is controlled airspace and uncontrolled airspace. So in controlled airspace, some or all aircraft is going to be subject to ATC, which is air traffic control. That's going to be airspace class A, B, C, D, and E. And class E, there's two main types. There's class E surface level and class E airspace. We'll go more in depth in that in a second. So looking at all these individually, just kind of reviewing these, um, class A or class alpha airspace, it's not depicted on charts and it's because it's literally everywhere. It starts at 18,000 feet MSL and it ends at flight level 600 and everything after that turns into class E airspace. Class B airspace is represented with a solid blue line. So class B, C, D, and E, um, they're all represented with lines. B is blue solid line. C is a magenta solid line. D is a broken or dashed blue line. And E is going to be similar where it's broken or dashed. So you can think of it as like solid, solid, broken, broken. So again, class B is a blue solid line typically surround large airports, busy airports. Um, and it goes, if you see something like this, that means it goes from not 20 to 90 feet, but 2000 to 9000 feet you're going to append two zeros to the end. Same thing with class C airspace. Notice how it says 70 and 15. Well, it's really 1,500 feet up to 7,000 feet. If you do see a T with class C, so look at this right here, this example. Um, if you see like some value and then T, S, F, C means surface to T. T means it goes up to, but does not include class B airspace. So that's it for class Alpha, Bravo, Charlie. Let's look at class Delta or class D airspace. So class D airspace is represented with a dash blue line and class D airspace can change. It's not always class D airspace. It actually can change to be either class E or class G airspace. And this is like after hours. So when the airport closes, you want to check the notice to airmen or the supplement to see if this airspace changes to class E or G after hours. Ceilings of class D airspace are represented like the following right here. So the very top of it, remember class B and class C are basically upside down wedding cakes. Class D airspace is just a single funnel or, or pipe. It's, it's, it's just a solid going up. So it ends at just one level and that will be 30 and inside of or outside of that is going to be like a, a broken box. It's, it's ceilings of class D are represented with like a number inside of a broken box. If you have a minus sign in front, it means it goes from the surface to something, but it does not include the something. So if we had a minus sign in, in front of this 30 right here, it means that our class D airspace would go from the surface up to, but not including 3000 feet. So it'd be more like 2,999 feet, basically what that means. Now we look at the two different class E airspace. So we have class E or class echo surface airspace, and it's symbolized with a dashed magenta line. Like class D, class E airspace can also change. So you want to check your notice to airmen or the chart supplement for the effective hours. Now that's for surface airspace. Let's look at the class E just airspace. And this is going to exist at 1,200 feet above ground level, unless otherwise stated. It, it could start at like 700 feet above ground level, but usually around 1,200 feet above ground level, and it'll go up to class A. So it goes from like 1,200 feet all the way to 18,000 feet class A. This is all going to be class E airspace. So you have kind of three different things that you can look at uh, on the right right here. If the floor of class E airspace is at 700 feet, which I've talked about, it could be previously. If it starts at 700 feet going up and touches class G airspace, it's going to have a faded magenta line with class G underneath it. Now, if it starts at 700 feet and it stops not at class G, but if it stops at 1000, 200 feet or higher, it's still faded magenta. But if it doesn't specifically touch class G, you can see there's no class G underneath it. Now, if we look at this blue one right here, if it's a faded blue, that means the floor is not at 700, but at its usual 1,200 feet or higher 
and it can touch class G airspace. So again, if the airspace class E, if it is starting at 700 and touches class G, it'll have magenta with G underneath it. If we look at this bottom one, if it starts at 1200 and goes up and touches class G, then it's just a faded blue. If the airspace is with a floor of 700 and touches 1200 or higher, it's just a solid or a solid faded magenta, we'll just say a faded magenta. Uh, that's going to be it for class E airspace and that concludes our controlled airspace section. If we look at uncontrolled airspace, there's only one, it's class G. And class G airspace can be from the surface level, um, but it can extend up to 14,500 feet MSL. And this is at or above class E airspace. So this kind of ties into what we were just talking about. Lastly, this is the third thing to talk about is special use airspace. Um, you can look to the right right here. You have how it would look on a sectional chart. You have prohibited, restricted, or warning areas, as well as alert areas and military operation areas or MOAs. So prohibited, restricted, and warning areas, as well as alert areas, they, well, all of these look very similar, but the four I just described are going to have some letter in front of it, P for prohibited, R for restricted, W for warning, and A for alert. And then they're going to have some numbers afterwards to signify the specific area. The special use airspace, or SUA, confines, restricts, or cautions other aircraft. Let's look at other airspace areas. We have mode C, and this basically just surrounds class B airspace. We have FAR, that's just an acronym you're going to have to be familiar with. FAR, FAR, stands for Federal Aviation Regulations. So you have FAR 93 and FAR 91. FAR 93 is basically you have special air traffic rules or patterns in the area. FAR 91 is when you can't use VFR. It's not allowed in this area. Then you have like national security areas which have a broken magenta line. You have special flight rule areas which are the following symbol where it's just a solid blue line with little blue blocks underneath it. You also have specific areas for like the Washington DC flight restricted zone. So you can think of like the presidential stuff. This is a restricted area. It uses kind of the same tick marks as the restricted area from up there. So it's pretty easy to remember. You have TFR, which is temporary flight restrictions. It's used by blocky broken blue lines. You have air defense identification zones. And these are represented with dots over a line. Similar to this, you have national defense airspace, temporary flight restrictions. So these are TFRs, but for the national defense airspace. And this is represented with a line. Instead of dots though, they have like slanted hash marks on it. So that's going to be the national defense airspace TFRs. Second to last, we have terminal radar service areas. And these are represented with like a black outline and they have sectors with gray lines inside of it. This is just for radar service areas. Lastly, we have MTRs, which are military training routes. They are routes with gray lines and an arrow pointing in the direction of flight. And these are represented with IR and VR. IR for instrument rules, VR for visual rules. Now there's some route identification here. If the route is below, 1,500 feet above ground level, so below 1,500, you're going to represent this with four numbers. As you go up, so if you're above 1,500 feet, you're going to be representing this with three numbers or less following VFR or IFR. So again, and let's add in one more piece of information. If you are below 1,500 feet above ground level, below 1,500, you are usually going to be dealing with VFR visual flight rules. So you'll have like VR and then four numbers afterwards. If you're above 1,500 feet, you're gonna be dealing with either VFR or IFR. So you're gonna have IR or VR. And again, you're above 1,500, your number is getting smaller. So you're gonna have three numbers listed after the IR or VR. Sometimes with MTRs, so military training routes, you're also given special information. So it'll be in a box and you'll have like a radio status, you'll have what it is, and that it's a military activity. And it'll be described just like this. So you can see the direction of flight, it's IR, so instrument rules 30, 
it's from 20 to 90 above ground level so you have the floor to the ceiling in hundreds of feet AGL so this is going to be 2,000 to 9,000 feet above ground level. That was kind of a review of airspace through VFR. Next, we're gonna be looking at foreign areas. So this should be pretty fun outside of the United States, short section.